Welcome to the Stutzman channel. You know, over the last few months, I've been trying to think of some uh, videos that I could be putting out. So I think I'm going to try to do some educational videos. And in this case, I'm going to start off with a topic of electronics, which to me is the most interesting and probably the most complicated. But before we get there, I think it's good that we do some preliminary videos so that we when you see some things that I put down, you all know and understand what these things are meaning. For example, we're going to be talking about scientific notation. In engineering, a lot of numbers are written in this here format or engineering notation, which is in uh, chemical engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, physics, you name any type of uh, engineering, you're going to see engineering notation. But before we get there, and we'll cover that in the next video, we're going to talk about scientific notation because you'll run across that also. And I think it's a little bit easier to understand. So this is like a prelude to what's coming up next, you know, for probably four videos. I'm going to cover this notation and then we're going to dive into this other topic of electronics. Okay, so let's get started. What is scientific notation. It's a way to express a number, a very large number or a very small number, which you will find in these here engineering fields that I've already mentioned. And it's a way, it's a kind of a shorthand way of writing it out. Let's say I take a number. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just make up any number. Let's just say one, two, three, four. We keep it easy. We won't even put a decimal point in there. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to make this number and I'm going to make it 1.234 times 10 to the third place. Okay? All right. Now, I haven't explained anything yet, but we're going to break it down and we're going to get there. This number right now is in a scientific notation format. This number over here is what's called decimal, fortation, decimal notation. Okay? Probably you see the number written more like this in everyday numbers that you see. Okay, this number, this part of the number here, 1.234, is known as the mantissa. This number, the 10, is known as the base. In scientific notation, this number 10 will always be 10. And in engineering notation, it will also be 10. Now that leaves this number right up here, this 3. This 3 is known as the exponent. Okay, now let's, let's look at the exponent. This 10 to the 3, what does that mean? That means that it's 10 raised to the third power. That means that 10 is multiplied times itself three times. Let's look at that. 10 times 10 times 10. 1, 2, 3. 3 times for the exponent, that's going to be equal to 1,000. That's pretty simple. If I had 10 to the second power, or 10 squared, as it's called, that'll be 100. 10 times 10. It's pretty simple. Okay. Now, let's look at this number. What if I had a number like 0 0.0235? Now you see that this number is less than 1. Okay? So what do we do here? We're going to make this 2.35 times 10. And let me get rid of this up in here. 2 to minus 2. Okay? 
Now we have an exponent that has a negative number. Okay, so here, here's the first rule. If you see a number that's 1 or greater than 1, you know that your exponent is going to be positive when you write it into the scientific notation. If you see a number that's less than 1, then you know that your exponent is going to be negative. Okay? Now, you're probably looking at this here, numbers here, this exponents, and it's not quite making sense, maybe with this 10 to the minus 2. Okay? Well, let's, let's look at that for a moment. Let's say I had a number, oh, 1, 10 squared. Okay? Now, we already said what 10 squared was. That was 10 times 10. So I could write that as 1 over... 100. Okay? And I can also write this as 0 0.01. That's 100th. And by the way, in engineering, you always want to be putting a leading zero. In other words, to the left of the decimal point, you're usually going to be putting a zero. All right? If there is no 1, 2, 3, you don't just go 0 0.01. So you want to put your leading zero there. All right. So now, that's what we have. Okay? So you can see that this 0 0.01 is equal to 100, and it's also equal to 110 squared. Okay? But that's still not explaining this minus 2, 10 to the minus 2, right? All right. Well, how about if I took this number... 10 squared, and I moved it up from the denominator, and I moved it up to the numerator. And if I do that, then I'm going to change the sign of the exponent. So now, I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to say 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay? Believe it or not, this and this are equivalent. So let's, let's take a number. Let's take a number and we're going to work it out. First we'll start with a number that's greater than 1. I'll make up a number. 2, 3, 5, 6. Right now we won't put a decimal point. We'll keep it simple. Alright. First, we look at it. We see the number is greater than 1. 1 or greater. So we know that the exponent is going to be having a positive number. I know that our decimal point is understood to be right here. So here's, here's the rule in scientific notation. You want to move the decimal point left or right, okay, depending on whether the number is, positive, uh, is more than one or less than one, so that you have one digit to the left of the decimal point. That number will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, but not 0. So anything from 1 to 9. So let's look. Here's our decimal point. I have to move it to the left, and if I put my decimal point right here, I will have one digit to the left of the decimal point, which is going to be 2. So, I will write 2.356 times 10. Remember 10, the base, always stays 10. How many times did I move the decimal point over to the left, which was 1, 2, 3. I moved it over 3 times. That is my exponent. 2.356 times 10 to the third power, or 10 cubed. That is the scientific notation of this number up here. Okay? Let's take another number. This time, let's put a decimal in portion to it. Let's say I had 1725.28. Now we're going to convert this number, which is in decimal notation, we're going to convert it over to scientific. 
first. I look at it. Oh, it's greater than one. I already know, automatically know that the exponent is going to be a positive number. Okay. Another way you can look at it, if you move the decimal over to the left, you're going to have a positive exponent. In this case, I'm moving the decimal over. I will move it over. One, two, three. I have one digit to the left of the decimal point. Remember, one through nine, but not zero. There is where the new number is going to be, and it's now going to be 1.7258 times 10. How many times did I move the decimal point over? 1, 2, 3. 10 to the third power. Okay? Now let's look at something that's less than 1. Okay? So let me erase this out. We'll get us a number. We'll just make up some number. 0 0.02583. Now, to get that digit to the left of the decimal point, you can see now that the decimal point has to move to the right. That means we're going to have a negative exponent. Also, if you remember, I said if the number is less than 1, you will automatically have a negative exponent. So we keep that in mind. So I look. I'm starting right here from my decimal point. I will go 1, 2, stop. There is my 2. So now I'm going to write it down as 2.583 times 10. Now we know that we moved it over two places, and now it will be minus 2. 10 to the minus 2. Okay? Now, do you remember earlier I mentioned that we could take this 10 to the minus 2, and we could carry it down to the denominator, change the sign, and it would still be equal. So, let's see if that works. So, I put down 2.58. 3, I carry my 10 to the minus 2 to the denominator, which is now 10 squared. If I move it down from one place to the other, if I go from the denominator to the numerator, I change the sign of the exponent, whatever it is. If I go from the denominator to the numerator, I change the sign, whatever it is, and it'll work out. So this is going to be equal to 2.583 divided by 10 squared, 10 times 10, that's 100, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.02583. Well, look at here. 0 0.02583, 0 0.02583, and that was the number we started out originally with, okay? Okay, this right here, this number right here, we got 5, Eight, seven, eight, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be kilograms. And by the way, kilo, if you did not know, is used with a lowercase. K, not a capital. The capital K is used for Kelvin. It's on the temperature scale. Okay? Now, I look at this number. What is this number? Well, you know what? This number is representing the weight of the Earth in kilograms. Now, let's convert this number over into scientific notation. We know that our decimal point is understood to be right there. We look at the number, we know that it's greater than 1, so we know the exponent is going to be positive. How many times do we have to move the decimal point over to get one digit over to the left of the decimal point? Number is 1 through 9, not 0. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? So, we're going to write this number down as 5.8786. You don't forget about the rest of the zeros. You're only going to be using the numbers that's left. 
5.876. If you got any zeros after that, don't worry about them. Don't write them down. Times 10. How many times did we move the decimal point over? 12 times. So now that's 10 to the 12th power. Okay. Now, so, and that's kilograms. So there you go. There's scientific notation. And you can see that you can take a big number, convert it into a notation that's very small. Now I'll give you another example here. This is the weight of a proton in kilograms. So let me write this one down. Zero point. And I have to, my goodness, oh, let's see. Now let me, uh, bear with me on this. Okay, I'm going to be putting out 26 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And it is going to be 16726. 1, six seven two six kilograms okay this is the weight of one proton now you can see with all of these zeros how it can be really confusing you might write the wrong number zeros you, you know so here's where the scientific notation comes in it makes it a lot easier in writing it out so all we have to do is we can see well, this number, you can see, is less than 1, so we know we're going to have a negative uh, exponent, right? Negative power for the exponent. We're also, you can see that we're moving right. If you want to go that way, if you move the decimal two point to the right, then it's going to be a negative exponent. If you move the decimal point to the left, then you're going to have a positive exponent. So, how many times do we have to move it over to have one digit to the left of the decimal point? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. All right. So now here I have 1.6726. And how many times did I move it over? Did I say what? 27, so that would be minus 27 kilograms, and that's the weight of a proton. Now you can see the difference in this number and the difference in this number. It's a big difference. And so like I said, in engineering, you're going to have sometimes some really big numbers, really small numbers. So this is a shorthand way of being able to write those numbers.